Scarlet and Violet are the latest adventures through the ever-expanding world of Pokémon. They also introduce the ninth generation, meaning a new region to explore and new Pokémon themselves. While some older Pokémon obtain an evolution, many others receive regional variants or new forms as well as quote-unquote old ones. This will make sense in a bit. Today, we want to see how these alternate forms stack up against the original versions we were introduced to. I'm Kyle with PokeBinge, and this is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Alternate Forms vs. Original Forms. Now let's clear a couple things up before getting started. First off, we'll be focusing specifically on Pokemon that have either regional variants or what are commonly referred to as paradox forms. We won't be looking at Pokemon that simply get new evolutions, such as Bisharp, Primeape, or Dunsparce, although it is nice to see Dunsparce finally get some love. We'll also only consider Pokemon that could still be seen as Pokemon that are almost, if not completely, the same species as its previous variant. This means that Pokemon like Wiglet, Wugtrio, Toadskool, and Toadscruel won't be included, since the games go out of their way to say that these are technically different species entirely. Lastly, while the designs of these Pokemon might end up being factored in a bit, we'll be focusing primarily on each Pokemon's overall stats. The first Pokemon we'll be looking at today is Donphan. While this Pokemon doesn't have a regional variant, Donphan does at least have two separate Paradox forms. The first one is called Great Tusk. When it comes to base stats, Great Tusk is better than Donphan in almost all departments, with the exception being its special stats. Even then, however, the difference is really not that much. When it comes to their type strengths and weaknesses, this is where things get a little more interesting. Donphan has fewer weaknesses than Great Tusk, but it also has fewer resistances. They both have the same weaknesses of water, ice, and grass, but Great Tusk's addition of fighting type gives it weaknesses to flying, psychic, and fairy type as well. With resistance, they both resist poison and rock, although Great Tusk has an even bigger resistance to rock than Donphan does, and it also gets resistances to bug and dark types. That being said, what about its future version, Iron Treads? Stat-wise, Iron Tread surpasses the other two when it comes to its special stats as well as speed. When it comes to HP, attack, and defense, however, Great Tusk is still on top. Type effectiveness is where Iron Treads takes a huge lead. It only has one more weakness than Donphan and two less than Great Tusk. When it comes to resistance, Iron Treads has more than the other two put together. Donphan has two, Great Tusk has four, and Iron Treads has eight. Not only this, but Iron Treads has two immunities, Electric and Poison, whereas the other two have just one. When it comes to movesets, Iron Treads has the Steel Typing, which puts it in a similar spot to Great Tusk, in that it gets access to moves that the others don't have. Overall, we'll give the edge to Iron Treads for now. Overall, its stats may not be the most impressive, but it can still hit fast and hard if needed. Combining this with 8 resistances and 2 immunities, and you could have a tricky opponent on your hand. Let's dive into the other Pokemon that has two separate Paradox forms, Volcarona. Volcarona already had an impressive base stat total, so you know its other forms will as well. We'll start with its past Paradox form, Slitherwing. Comparing their stats, their HP and special defense remains the same, but they trade off a bit in everything else. The kind of power Volcarona has in Special Attack is the exact same that Slitherwing has in Physical Attack. While Slitherwing also has slightly better defensive capabilities, Volcarona can hit much faster. Volcarona also has access to Quiver Dance, allowing it to move even faster and hit harder with its already high Special Attack stat. Type effectiveness also gives Volcarona the upper hand. Not only does Volcarona have fewer weaknesses, but also more resistances. Not only this, but Volcarona also has a 4 times resistance to grass, whereas Slitherwing doesn't have any 4 times resistance at all. They're both capable of learning a wide variety of moves, so it's likely about even in that department. Between these two, we believe Volcarona is the better one to pick overall. But can the same be said when going up against the future Paradox form, Iron Moth? Iron Moth has a little more in its special stats and speed, whereas Volcarona has a little more in physical stats and HP. They also both have access to a wide variety of moves. Volcarona has Quiver Dance to help boost some already high stats, and Iron Moth has access to Toxic Spikes, which can put most of its opponents on a timer as it were. 
They also each have an ability that can boost their stats or moves respectively under certain circumstances, and those are just a couple of examples. Where Iron Moth ultimately takes the cake is in its type effectiveness. While it's true that Iron Moth has one more weakness than Volcarona does, it more than makes up for that in resistances. Volcarona has six, while Iron Moth has eight. Not only this, but while Volcarona only has one 4x resistance, that being against grass, Iron Moth has three four times resistance resistances to Bug, Grass, and Fairy. With that in mind, we proclaim Iron Moth as the winner, with Volcarona a very close second. Now that we've gone over the Pokemon with two Paradox forms, we'll go through each Pokemon that has just one, starting out with the past forms. First, let's compare Amoongus with its past Paradox form, Brute Bonnet. With the overall stats, Amoongus has higher base HP and special attack, but Brute Bonnet rules in every other category. Taking on this form, Brute Bonnet gives up the poison typing and trades it for the dark type, making it match the typing of Shift Tree. This dual type is a bit of a double-edged sword. While it does have one more type that it resists compared to Amoongus, it also has three more weaknesses than Amoongus does. Not only this, but the dark typing makes it four times weaker to bug type moves. Additionally, it makes it so, instead of being four times resistant to grass, it's only two times resistant. It does gain an immunity to psychic type moves, but that's about it. With Amoongus being poison and Brute Bonnet being dark, they each get access to moves of their respective types that others don't. Other than that, their move pool is incredibly similar. While we want to give Brute Bonnet our pick since it has the overall superior stats, it's the amount of weaknesses and less powerful resistances that lead us to stick with Amoongus for the time being. Next on the block is Magneton and its paradox form, Sandy Shocks. When it comes to their stats, Sandy Shocks takes the win on all accounts, though some of them are by a very small margin. While Sandy Shocks is superior in stats, Magneton really shines in type effectiveness. Magneton is only weak to three types, whereas Sandy Shocks is weak to four. While Magneton does have a four times weakness to ground types, it can, albeit temporarily, turn that weakness into an immunity with the move Magnet Rise, something Sandy Shocks doesn't have access to. Magneton's type resistances are also far more vast. Sandy Shocks has only four type resistances, while Magneton has a whopping 11 types it can resist. Not only that, but Magneton is four times resistant to two of them, that being Flying and Steel. Their move pools are very similar, though there are some moves exclusive to each. If they were ever to face off against each other, we believe that Magneton comes out on top, with it being able to resist most of the moves Sandy Shock has at its disposal, along with being able to negate its ground type moves with Magnet Rise. On the other hand, Magneton has access to stronger normal type moves, such as Takedown or Hyper Beam. That could really cause a problem for Sandy Shocks. Either way, it's the incredibly high amount of resistances that Magneton has that leads to us giving Magneton the win. Next, let's talk about Jigglypuff and its Paradox version, Screamtail. Aside from a matching HP stat, Screamtail outdoes Jigglypuff in every stat category. The comparisons of their type effectiveness is actually not too different. They're both weak to poison and steel, and they both have only two resistances. Jigglypuff just edges out Screamtail here, however. Jigglypuff is also part normal type, meaning they have an immunity to ghost types. Screamtail, on the other hand, is part psychic instead, resulting in that immunity being a weakness. As for their movesets, they both can learn a wide array of moves. As for what they learn naturally though, Screamtail is just a little more versatile. The stats are the main factor here as well, and we'll be giving the point to Screamtail on this one. Hopefully Jigglypuff doesn't get too mad and try to draw on our faces if we fall asleep. Speaking of sleep, we hope you're not too afraid of the dark because a Mistrevis or a Fluttermane might be hiding somewhere. These two are in a similar boat to that of Jigglypuff and Screamtail. Fluttermane's base stat total is a bit higher than that of Mistrevis. Because of the way these extra stat points are arranged, Mistrevis's HP and physical stats are just barely higher. However, that is overshadowed by Fluttermane's special stats and speed being higher by a wider margin. Type effectiveness is very close in comparison. They share the same amount of weaknesses, and they also each have three separate immunities. The resistances are where it's slightly different. Mistrevis has two, while Fluttermane has just one. 
That being said, that one resistance is multiplied by four instead of just two. In the moveset category, this also falls into a boat like that of Jigglypuff. They both have a lot of options as to what they can use. However, with what they learn naturally, Fluttermane takes the edge over Misdreavus. For very similar reasons as Jigglypuff and Screaming Tail, we're giving the point to Fluttermane this time around. The final Pokemon introduced in the past Paradox Forms category is one that resembles Salamence, Roaring Moon. This particular form looks more like a Mega Salamence, but we'll still be comparing it to Salamence when it's not in its Mega form. While it isn't by much, Roaring Moon's stat total is actually lower than the original. That being said, Roaring Moon's individual stats exceed most of Salamence's. Salamence does at least have better defense and special attack stats though. As for type effectiveness, we would argue that Salamence also has the edge here. While they each have an immunity and a 4 times weakness to something, Salamence only has 4 total weaknesses, whereas Roaring Moon has 5. While Roaring Moon does have one more resistance than Salamence does, one of Salamence's resistances, that being Grass, is also multiplied by 4. Finally, there's the movesets. Roaring Moon does at least appear to have more options overall in terms of the different types of moves it can use. This is more than likely helped by its dark typing. We honestly think the choice here could really boil down to what moves you place on this one, as each one definitely has their perks, with neither completely outshining the other. For this reason, we're calling this matchup a tie. We studied the past, so now let's look to the future, specifically some future Paradox forms. Starting off with Hariyama and its future Paradox lookalike, Iron Hands. With their stats, the only thing they share is a common base speed stat. Otherwise, Iron Hands has greater base stats everywhere else, even if only by a slim amount in certain categories. Then comes the type effectiveness. Hariyama is pure fighting type, whereas Iron Hands is a dual type of fighting and electric. You would think the added type would lead to it having more weaknesses, which is actually not the case. As a matter of fact, Iron Hands has the upper, well, hand here. They may both have three weaknesses that do 2x the damage to them. They both have no immunities, and they both have the same resistances to rock, bug, and dark. Iron Hands gains the advantage now as they have two extra resistances to electric and steel types. They both have quite the array of moves to choose from as well, in both physical and special styles. So one doesn't necessarily have a big advantage over the other. It's the superior base stats combined with the extra resistances though, that leave us with giving the point to Iron Hands. Next, let's take a look at the future Paradox Pokemon, Iron Jugulus, and the Pokemon it's connected to, Hydragon. With Hydragon being a pseudo-legendary, it's already set the bar pretty high for any Pokemon to be compared to them. With their stats, Hydragon's base total is slightly higher, giving it the immediate advantage in that department. Iron Jugulus just barely beats it out in HP and speed, while Hydragon is higher everywhere else. In terms of how types affect them or vice versa, however, Iron Jugulus is the one with the slight edge. They both at least have the same immunities, and while Hydragon has more resistances, it also has more weaknesses. This includes a weakness to Fairy that is multiplied by 4, whereas it's only doubled for Iron Jugulus. It's for this that Iron Jugulus has even the score up until this point. But lastly comes the movesets. For the most part, they both naturally learn from the same types. However, Iron Jugulus's flying type gives it immediate access to a couple more moves in that type. With all the moves they can learn overall, it becomes much more ridiculous. However, Hydragon has the slight edge here this time. This mainly comes from its capability of breeding. Thanks to and including this, Hydragon has the ability to pull from slightly more types than Iron Jugulus does. And due to these small advantages, we're giving the win to Hydragon. Now let's talk about a different pseudo-legendary that also has a future paradox relative, Tyranitar and Iron Thorns. The stat category is very similar to our previous entry in that the paradox form's base stat total is also slightly lower than the original. The stats are arranged a bit differently though. Their base HP and physical stats are exactly the same. With the rest, Tyranitar has the edge in both special stats, while Iron Thorns only has it in speed. 
This is interesting since Iron Thorns is heavier than Tyranitar's Mega Form even is. The effectiveness of types is where it tips in Iron Thorns' favor, though. They both do have a weakness that is multiplied by four. However, Iron Thorns only has four overall weaknesses compared to Tyranitar 7. Not only this, but while Iron Thorns has one less resistance, it makes up for this with one of them being a 4x resistance. Finally, when it comes to their options for movesets, they both also have many types they can work with, with Tyranitar having the tiny edge here. It's close, but with Iron Thorns fewer overall weaknesses, we have to give it the win. With Christmas fast approaching, we now turn our heads to a Pokemon that loves to give presents. Delibird and its futuristic relative, Iron Bundle. Generally speaking, with some definitive exceptions, the Paradox versions of Pokemon have higher base stat totals than their original counterparts. It's certainly no exception here, as Iron Bundles far exceeds Delibird's. This results in Iron Bundle's base stats beating out Delibird's in every single category. The way they interact with different types is where it becomes a bit more even. They have the exact same number of weaknesses and resistances. However, Iron Bundle gains a slight advantage due to not having any weaknesses that are multiplied by 4. Additionally, one of their two resistances is multiplied by 4. Delibird does at least make up for this a little bit due to having an immunity to ground types, though Iron Bundle also has a bit of an edge over Delibird in the movesets. It's the stats, type effectiveness, and much greater natural move pool that easily makes us give the win to Iron Bundle. For our final Pokemon in the Paradox form list, we'll be taking a look at Iron Valiant. This one is probably the hardest one to compare. The reason for this is that Iron Valiant has a design that takes elements from Gardevoir, Gallade, and even Gallade's Megaform. However, since we will argue that Iron Valiant looks closer to Gallade, that's the Pokemon that we'll be comparing Iron Valiant to. Like with Roaring Moon and Salamence, we'll be comparing Iron Valiant to Gallade when it isn't in its mega form. Starting with stats, Iron Valiant already takes a decent lead. Glade does outshine its future relative in special defense by a bit, but Iron Valiant wins in all other departments, although some of the differences aren't that big. How they work against other types doesn't really help Glade too much either. He does at least have two less weaknesses, but that's where it basically ends. Iron Valiant picks up two more resistances than Glade has, and both of them have a resistance multiplier of four. It also helps Iron Valiant that it has a complete immunity to dragon type moves, while Glade doesn't have any immunity at all. With their movesets, it becomes a bit more even. They both learn moves, even naturally, from a good chunk of the types found in the series up until now. While it could be argued to lean slightly in Gallade's favor, it's not enough to balance things out against the other categories where Iron Valiant takes the cake. Due to this, we're giving the win to Iron Valiant. While this may mean we're done with Paradox forms, we're not quite done altogether. This list covers alternate forms in general, so we have to include Paldean forms. Sadly, there appears to be only two Pokemon, three if you count Paldean Whooper's evolution as a separate entry, that receive a new regional variant in this game. For the sake of the video, we're going to compare Quagsire to Paldean Whooper's evolution, Clodsire. Yes, it is true that these two are technically different Pokemon since they have different names. That said, we thought it would be a little less complicated to just compare the evolutions of each Wooper. In stats, their base stat totals are exactly the same. However, the way they're arranged favors Quagsire overall. Cloudsire does beat out Quagsire in HP and Special Defense by a decent chunk, but the average stat number for the rest are in favor of Quagsire. Weaknesses and resistances is where it gets a little more interesting. Quagsire has a 4x weakness to grass. The thing is though that it's the only weakness. Clodsire, on the other hand, has four total weaknesses. While none of them are multiplied by four, we think Quagsire still has it so far, due to just having that one weakness. They both have an immunity to electric moves, so that cancels out. Resistances are where Clodsire shines a little more. Not only does it have one more type resistance than Quagsire does, but one of said resistances is multiplied by four. This helps Clodsire stay in the running a bit. Then we get to the moves that they can use. In terms of the amount of types they can pull from, it is pretty even. It appeared to us that both of them only have six types of moves that they can't use. Due to this being so close, it doesn't help either one all that much. We're going to give the win to Quagsire today, with the deciding factors boiling down to Quagsire having just one weakness and better stats overall. Now we get to the final Pokemon on the list, Tauros. 
This is another complicated one. Neither variant of Tauros has an evolution. However, Paldean Tauros has three separate forms, or breeds as they're called, that can change things up. What we'll do is start by comparing the original Tauros to the Paldean Combat Breed version. Whichever one wins will then be compared to the other two to see which version comes down on top. So let's take a look at the Kanto Tauros versus the Combat Breed Tauros. The base stat totals of these two are the same. Their stats in general are also arranged in such a way that they're either the same or off by a small total of 10. In short, Original Tauros is slightly faster, while Paldean Tauros hits slightly harder. With their types, Original Tauros is pure normal, while the Paldean version is pure fighting. As such, they get the weaknesses of those types. The normal typing gives one weakness to fighting and immunity to ghost type Pokemon. This also means Tauros has no resistances. Paldean Tauros, on the other hand, has the weaknesses of fighting types, psychic, flying, and fairy. While our Paldean friend has more weaknesses and no immunities, they make up for this with having three separate resistances. The deciding factor will be in their available moves to use. Tauros, being a normal type, learns mostly normal type moves naturally. However, like with many other normal types, Tauros gets a large list of different types of moves to use, even with some being a little out there. I mean, one would not expect a bull to breathe fire. In any case, Paldean Tauros, despite not being a normal type, is in a very similar boat. It has about the same amount of options, although most of the better moves it can have are physical. With it being much more of a physical attacker, however, especially with the help of the Anger Point ability, this is perfectly fine. At the end of the day, while the decision is very difficult, we'll just barely give the point to the Kanto Tauros due to having only one weakness, an immunity, and just a little more versatility in moves it can use which leaves the original Tauros with two more breeds to face off against. Round 2 is the Kanto Tauros versus the Blaze Breed Paldean Tauros. We actually don't need to focus on stats anymore, as it turns out no matter which breed Paldean Tauros takes on, its stats remain the same. So let's go over to weaknesses. This breed of Paldean Tauros, as expected by their breed name, is now also part fire type. This also means they get some of the weaknesses and resistances other fire types have. As a result, Blaze Breed Tauros has one more weakness than the Combat Breed. That said, they also pick up three new resistances. Not only this, but their shared resistance to Bug is multiplied by four with this breed instead of just two. Finally, there's the movesets. Blaze Breed Tauros, as is expected, naturally learns a couple of fire type moves. One being Flame Charge, which also increases its speed, and Flare Blitz, a move that is definitely powerful but risky for both the opponent and the user. In any case, the overall options that this Tauros can learn is just as versatile as the combat breed, being able to pull from all the same types, albeit in different ways. All these factors lead us to put Blaze Breed Tauros over the combat breed, and we'll even go one step further and say that it's better than the Kanto Tauros. Its increased number of resistances, one of which being multiplied by four, is the bigger game changer. But let's see how the Blaze Breed Tauros stacks up against the Aqua Breed Tauros. Tauros. All the stats are the same, so let's talk about weaknesses and resistances. With this Tauros's type combination of fighting and water, it picks up one more weakness than the Blaze Breed, but also has one more resistance. That being said, none of those resistances are multiplied by four, so that keeps things relatively even. As with other entries so far, this one will come down to movesets. Instead of Flame Charge, the Aqua Breed has Aqua Jet, which is a commonly used water type priority move. It also learns Wave Crash, which is a lot like a water version of Flare Blitz. Aqua Breed Tauros's move type options are slightly smaller than the rest. They still have a lot to choose from, but it's the least versatile when compared to the others. While the Aqua Breed comes in very close, Blaze Breed Tauros takes the win, primarily due to the four times resistance and fewer weaknesses. But if it's any consolation, this was a very close call. But let us know in the comments section what you think. Let us know in the comments section below. And make sure to hit that notification bell to binge more of our Pokemon videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.